Okay, thank you guys for coming out. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy to see you guys. And thank you everyone who's watching virtually. Um, let's get started. Um, our first reader tonight is um, Shanta D. Gander. Shanta is a writer, photographer, and journalist whose work has been featured in many publications, and she is a regular contributor to the Vermont Public Studio, Art New England, and the Ms. Magazine blog. She is the 2020 recipient of the Arthur Williams Award for Meritorious Service to the Arts. Shanta Lee is the author of Get a Claustrophobia, Dreaming of Mama While Trying to Speak Woman in Woke Tongues. The winner of um, the 2020 editions, sorry, Diode Editions Book Prize and the recipient of an honorable mention from the Sheila Margaret Martin Prize. Reviews of the book have been featured in the Poetry Foundation's Harriet Books, Seven Days, the Kenyan Review, and the Adroit Journal. Black Metamorphosis, Shanta Lee's second full-length poetry collection, is to be published by Etruscan Press and is inspired by her lifelong love of mythology. This second poetry manuscript was long listed for the 2021 Idaho Poetry Prize, shortlisted for the 2021 Cowles Poetry Book Prize, and named a finalist in the 2021 Hudson Prize. When Chantilly is not writing poetry, she is working on her memoir project, doing arts and culture reviews for Vermont Public Radio, and tending to her photography projects. She has an undergraduate degree in women, gender, and sexuality from Trinity College, an MBA from the University of Hartford, and an MFA in creative nonfiction and poetry from the Vermont College of Fine Arts. She teaches media studies at the Putney School and enjoys anything that allows her to explore beneath the surface, especially breaking into abandoned places. To see her visual art or read more of her work, visit shantaligander.com. Welcome, Shanta. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to thank Diode Editions and my fellow readers for tonight. I'm so excited. Uh, so, yeah, given, oh, let me start my timer. So I don't take too much time. Do, do, do. This is, here we go. All right. Um, so get a claustrophobia. This is interesting that we're doing this Halloween reading because um, get a claustrophobia was prompted by a write in with myself, my husband, and a couple of friends in honor of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein um, 200th anniversary celebration a couple of years ago. So this is some of the the seeds of ghetto claustrophobia came out of that. Forgotten tastes like sour cheese sour to the tongue while visiting mother. Here, you banish the sins of the day, banish what couldn't find its way. Into the pot, the rock in the corner, a veiled stench, and another there, you be balm, salve. You be sanctified, a part of how good got right, how right got us forgot how to get right. The closest we come feels kind of like the voices that reaches in, makes we jump, not that kind of jump. The one hid in Hank Blue, red doors, the one where pulpit pimps be saying, you got to be ready when he comes rolling up in a chariot for when he comes, you ain't got time to be fussing. He be the boy from that other place causing her fuss. Maybe he be like she theft in time. He be that boy from a place they wouldn't speak about, both of them, letting the world think that their skin told its kind of truth. It was a Ken's kind of truth. Taste like frail, built upon bodies, white face, ellipses, dashes. Honey, they don't teach that kind of code. The code wasn't in a book. Branches so tangled, tongues can't speak it. But mama's 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 mama claps back from forgotten. Mama's 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 mama standing at the edge of my bed. 
She followed the yellow traces of the calendula to my pillow, reaching for my throat, hers filled with daggers, disturbance, and time saying, girl, you didn't ask. Roaming the Deadlands. His ghost hung in the attic apartment. I was told to bury my face, hide from the naked, keep one eye open. You'll know what the forms are. They ask, what did you hear? Name nothing. We had no sight. Silence. Our braille as years do what they do. Passing, gifting, scattering. We still don't know who started it all off. The first taste of delicious. Like the dried blood of meat on tongues. Teaching want without why or how. Ghosts hung along a mapped highway of dead roads. We became the spirits roaming the topography. What does unfamiliar feel like beyond the senses? Ghosts of what we were haunting, leaving our skin of the spode trauma kind. I'm going to read a poem um, that actually is inspired by one of H.P. Lovecraft's monsters. But I've been fascinated by uh, the set of creatures, Cthulhu included, that kind of live below the primordial monsters. Cthulhu's Diaries. One. Knee-high brown socks is the last thing I remember. Did it all start in the basement? The way an elementary school bathroom stall holds the secrets of playing house, like the way a whistle makes contact with yellow shorts fitted upon prepubescent bodies. Somewhere in a dark room, your ice cream land on my nine-year-old legs. Somewhere, barely hidden by the lip of the doorway, that boy is still waiting. He's next. Looked like, looked a lot like the night I wanted to scream at the ceiling. I'm not ready. A lot like ignoring the way the vein strained against his neck, never noticing her resistance on my nightstand. I kept thinking, Klimt's kiss, bring me more of that thing. I once hoped that school children finished what I started with, a wishbone after they understand banter on a playground, before they realize that full moons will keep mine in their own business, with or without your words. Against the concrete walls, he dry fucked me in auntie's garage while homemade vanilla ice cream dripped down our chins. I wanted his hands on my eight-year-old body. They warned, he fills you up. Everyone knows it. I spent all my Herald Street waiting for it, like trying to decipher the first sounds of the universe. Knees digging into mats, clasped hands are better than the ones pumping fists. All just another way to say meditation, yoga, tantra, sutras, confession. Like a lost child with beads between my fingers, I chanted, Om Mani Padme Om, killing you before your eyes could open. I didn't have an apology big enough for that invitation. Two, no apology big enough for that invitation. So I killed you before your eyes could open, chanting, Oh, money, Padme, om, like a lost child holding beads between my fingers, meditation, yoga, tantra, sutras, all to say, clasped hands are the ones better than the ones pumping fists, knees dug into mats, tried to decipher the first sound of the universe, like spending all my Herald Street waiting. Though they warn, he fills you up, Everyone knows it. I wanted his hands on my eight-year-old body. Homemade vanilla ice cream dripped down our chins while he dry fucked me. I liked it. Once, I hoped that school children could finish what I started with a wishbone after they understand banter on a playground, before they realize full moons will mind their business with or without your words. I thought Klimt's kiss on my nightstand could bring me more of that thing never noticing her resistance, ignoring the ways the veins strained against his neck. Looked a lot like the night I screamed at the ceiling, I'm not ready. 
somewhere. The boy waited, barely hidden by the lip of the doorway. Somewhere he'd be next. In the same place where your ice cream lands on my nine-year-old legs in a dark living room. Like the way a whistle makes contact with yellow shorts. The way an elementary school bathroom stall holds the secrets of playing house. Or did it all start in that basement? The last thing I remember is knee-high brown socks. Uh, these a couple of sections are small segments out of uh, the interlude section, the day God's thermostat broke, ghetto claustrophobic dream interlude. During that summer, our eyes ate before our stomachs did, especially when we were at Aunt Mary and Uncle John's house, especially when it came to Kentucky Fried Chicken, family size, mix of original and spicy. The spicy for the way it was crispy, the original for the way it had that flavor, their secret recipe. But our recipe was something like this. Add a great aunt and a great uncle and their mustard colored house in South Windsor. Add a mama seemingly happy until she draws her lips tight, tighter than a cat's asshole for an unknown reason. Add at least one child to seal this memory of how toxic things, only deemed toxic later in life, can be confused with love. Optional ingredient, cousins. Most important ingredient, Aunt Mary's Kool-Aid, that kind is, that's always too sweet, the kind that seemed to call for a five pound bag of sugar. Notice how the sweet pairs nicely with the grease on the tongue. Notice how the fried chicken mixed with Auntie's too sweet for the teeth Kool-Aid were the baneful bites that trained the tongue. Notice how the trained tongue knows that the most toxic of things are the things that taste the best in summer's heat. World War II is imprinted upon the face of that building, but it refuses to tell us any of its secrets. The apartment here in Naples is big. New York is all over the living room, betraying the Italian spoken in the streets. No fans, no air conditioning. Repellent discovered a few days ago, even with repellent, they liked what they tasted. They will not stop coming back for more skin, more blood. The sun beats us down by day, by night, a breeze refuses us. The pipes hum. The television brings us oddities from the only channel that works. My favorite from the other day was an Italian music video, That Bastard Don't Love Me. We like it here. The oddities. The hum. Trying to guess the connection between the layers and the buildings, between time. You're walking on bodies, on graves said the mother of a man who owned the apartment. Buildings built from what was found in the graves in between the space of the quiet is the apartment we wonder. Maybe she's right. Sometimes we try the locked door thinking the apartment is as big as the one in Rosemary's baby. Maybe the devil is our neighbor. Remember what a friend told us back in the States at one of our parties? If you play the right music, the devil will come. Are we playing the right music? And the last poem I'll read. Wake, a spell. Body pitched to the unseen. Don't darn all the holes, leave some for looking. Don't say all that is seen, leave some for those who gonna say. Wake. Escaped walls and mouths gonna say otherwise. Between wake and sleep, some gonna ask you. Between wake and sleep, some gonna dare you. You are the one who checked in here. No need to tell you. Wake. Yours is a tongue tuned to telling. Stitch stories, darn trauma, weave joy. And for the unwritten, the never said, the never seen, raise up as if dead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shanta. We just heard from Shanta Lee Gander, the author of Get Into Claustrophobia. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oops. 
Our next author is Simone Person. Simone Person is a Black, queer, femme, two-time Pink Door Writing Retreat Fellow and an editor at Just Femme and Dandy. They are the author of Dislocated, published by Honeysuckle Press in 2018, and Smoke Girl, published by Diode Editions in 2019. Simone grew up in small Michigan towns in Toledo, Ohio. They can be found at simonepurston.com. Welcome, Simone. Uh, okay, uh, that was so good. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so the first poem I'm going to read, um, I just want to give a just general content trigger warning for anybody about, you know, intimate partner violence, sexual assault, uh, disordered eating, uh, racism, colonialism, imperialism, just, you know, small little things, no biggie. Um, okay, so this first poem is called High Bun for the Unlived Life. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, I mean it but that's how we're going to pronounce it tonight. So, High Bun for the Unlived Life. You are warmest hands, apple tree, and buttercream frosting every day. The sun brings you egg cracked in your window, like always. From downstairs, your honey crisp husband angels your name for breakfast. Draped in ostrich feather luster, you tink, tink, tink into the kitchen on your charmingly impractical house heels and kiss him, inking his cheek with lipstick that's colored you both blushed on your wedding night. He slides a pillowed omelet onto your plate, topped with brightly wedged avocado, then sets a bowl of carefully spooned oatmeal and cherry almond orange compote next to your mug, filled with coffee smooth enough to wear. He sits down across from you, Halcyon mirror, and he is beautiful in a way that fits comfortably in your mouth. When he smiles, you can taste pop rockets and summer drenched skin, and the whole air smells fresh squeezed. You two are a romantic dazzle, and the two of you fit together like teeth. Everything in your home has its place, tenderly stacked and arranged, and no one knows how to raise their voice into shriek. Here, hands hold no hunger. Your body is not the wintered tree, soon emptied of its chorus of crows as they bleed into fist across the sky. You never learned how easily you death blight to heart rot, rat king, until you've noosed your own breath. In this life, the one butchered away from you by men who only liked you with their boot square and your back. Every door is open with choir. The night winds are hand sewn full of gauze, starlight, and the word safety is built unstained into you. So my next poem, which is also a bummer, <laughs> is called uh, Prayers to St. Catherine. Um, it was just a, a Catholic saint, one of many. Um, so, yeah. All right. Prayers to St. Catherine. It says none of what I remember is true, that I'm just greedy for revenge. Heavenly Catherine, I would give everything to be my own practiced cage, fail safe back to who I was, abandon my grief split howling. I admit I rejoice in hunger's choir, practice the ugly math of body, devout notations on violence badly built into skin. I know I've reared a terrible throne, but it's the last thing left that's only mine, and I can't give up more of my dead. Have I overindulged on penance? Make this mouth grave, humble dirge, blessed ruin, I just want to do it right. At night, I burn my hair down to scalp, but it returns every dawn dark. I'm bloated with memory, knowledge bitter that men's proud rage is my lonely heirloom. I could fill my whole house with the wrong ways I've been loved. Always target practice, the thing he leveled. I have no choice but to empty. Um, okay, so this next poem is called 
uh, Chet Hanks explains how, if you think about it, we're all Africans. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Chet Hanks explains how, if you think about it, we're all Africans, and he smiles a poplar teeth chorus. With a sawed-off stare adorns us queen, as in black, as in his. He names it admiration, a burnt cork offering says if we're smart, we'll take it, before he loses interest. His reminder of what he's called, that everything we call ours is ripening into taking. A howling obad signaling the beginning of the hunt. Chet blesses himself righteous architect, ready to ravage everything not of his body. He explains the slaughter is his birthright. White boy as puddle deep, as gaunt manifestation of God, he says he's got a legacy to carry. Vulgars in his blood. And he's always liked that word, blood. How easy it is to find so abundant a dulled gospel just waiting beneath skin. Okay, so this next poem uh, has a very long title because I think it's funny when I'm writing them and then when I have to read them, I'm like, shit. Okay, so this is called Broken Pan Tomb to the White Boys Who Only Loved Me As Far As Their Savior Complexes Could Throw Me. Or, this is just another one of her episodes that'll pass. Um, yeah, I've gotten really into form, uh, forms, so I was like, what if I just only did a little bit of a pantoum and called it that? And I can't, because it's my poem. So here we go. <laughs> um, all right. He said, I'm prettiest when I service. A sweet-shouldered softness where he could rest his head. Just wanted me mystery, late night option, murmur warm and lights off. I'm not sure I believe in anything but a man's unflinching thirst. He loved me best when I'd humbled to ornamental, eager to watch how good I girled on silver platter. Desire cursed and overfilled with waiting, I blighted. Call it greed or hollowed rebellion, but I've outgrown painting myself with vivid detail and angling to be seen. I'd rather flourish as omen. These days, I get out of bed on the hope I become the sharpest pain in every man fool-blooded enough to cross me. I'm hoarding inherited rage, weaving it brighter. I've pained sharp in every man, and so what? I haven't claimed to be more than cage, my rage bright inheritance. He never blessed me with choice. I had to ripen into weapon. Okay. <laughs> so this next poem and my whatever comes before penalty. Okay, uh, I think we lost Simone. Um, so Hazem, do you want to uh, read? And then maybe Simone can finish the reading uh, with her penultimate poem or ultimate sure. poem. I actually don't know <laughs> which word it is either. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll introduce you. Um, Hazem Fadmi is a writer and critic from Cairo. He runs the media criticism newsletter Zamzum on Letter Drop. His debut chapbook, Red Jailed Prayer, won the 2017 Diode Editions Contest. A Kundaman and Watering Hole Fellow, his poetry has appeared or is forthcoming in the Best American Poetry 2020 AAWW. The Boston Review, and Prairie Schooner. His criticism has appeared or is forthcoming in Movie Notebook, Reverse Shot, and Mizna. His performances have been featured on Button Poetry and Right About Now. Welcome, Hazem. All right. Um, once again, I really want to thank Zoe for inviting me uh, to this reading. Uh, it's always a pleasure to work with Diode. 
Um, and I'm, I feel really honored and lucky to follow up uh, Shantan Simone's uh, great work. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, some poems for you all. These are a mix of uh, some quite old and <laughs> some uh, much newer. <clears throat> Against iconography. Forgive me for insisting that Umm Kalsum was not a god. Her name was Fatma. She was born in the Ahleya. My best friend's great-grandfather was in love with her, for real. There's a book about them. It is somewhere in my house gathering dust. The specter of the nation is all-encompassing. I care neither for the myth nor the legend. The eclipse of Kaukab is, is still but shadow. An artist is not a country. I seek the woman who sang of restless nights of longing. I seek the woman who transfixed my mother to the radio. I will not make a siren of the dead. I am not a passport. Soil upon becoming larger than life, more abstract than dirt, has no hope of saving us. If we must seek gods, let them be borderless. If a love song must become battle cry, let it be one for the ages, a house open to all who seek refuge. My peoples, I invite you all to indulge in the audacity of loving your neighbor without an anthem. Had I been gifted music, I would have sung the citizen away. The second poem is untitled. <clears throat> I'll be the first to confess that I have used the most elusive of words, diaspora, as a crutch. My country reduced to an image. Two smiling actors, Almar Sharif and Fadin Hamema, look how glamorous. My country is a star, beautiful and fancy. My country is a definable thing, a static landscape to which I dream of returning. Back home, I meet friends on the front line. X might get arrested. Y's friend is still missing. Z is still in jail. At least now his family knows where he is. My family mocks those hyphen Americans over there worried about representation. If they're so worried about how we look in American movies, tell them to watch an Egyptian one, my father says. I say nothing. Nothing is that simple. My father thinks you can't get disappeared in America, and that is a lie. I curse every cop everywhere. In New York, I meet Egyptians who may never go back in this lifetime. There, too, they know the terror of the badge. I curse every cop that ever was or ever will be. I pledge allegiance to a copless nation that is a nation that does not even exist, nor can it ever. Any day, a fascist could walk on my campus. Bright spring day, me and Ahmed sit on a bench after class, thankful to bid the rain farewell. Before we begin, an old man interrupts. Something incoherent about Robert E. Lee, who I quickly gather, rested on the empty pedestal, mere feet from where I teach Arabic every day, his name still inscribed in the marble. He rambles on, and I want to cackle at his wrinkled face, ask about the irony of claiming to love this country in the same breath as a eulogy for its greatest traitors. But I stay silent, uninterested in the old man's teeth. Ahmed takes a diplomatic approach. Seven years in, he is still too new for this country, still holds steadfast faith in the art of persuasion. I held that hope once, and it too was ironic. The clown would have you believe the sickness began with an idiot's flailing hands. Such is the trap of the unfaithful. Perhaps the greatest embarrassment to America is the liberal and his cowardice. Don't be coy. Say the names of this land's criminals. Say Obama was a charismatic blood letter. Presidential is a fancy word for a fancy murderer. Empires don't run on clean hands. Curse the finger that launches the drones, that signs away Palestine. This is how the frontier becomes global, hence invisible. To forget the frontier is to forget the empire. If the frontier was birthed, it is only natural that it lives with us. Hence, our schools become frontier, my campus a bloodbath. We are all dreaming of the end of the world, the thrill of oblivion. Call it what you will, annihilation is seductive. After life for the doomed land, the time has come to excavate, so say it. I am a fucking American, so I am myth, contested territory, a land as a narrative and not a pretty one at that. Never trust an American who will not admit to being American. The frontier is alive and within us, my torso, a blazing landscape of galloping horses and cowardly men who wait for the night to do their bidding. My breath, a torrent of fireworks indistinguishable from gunshots, the scream being the soundtrack to our dance, this dance being the terror of the terrified, the animal that knows no rest. Cursed are we for our mediocre memory, our bad faith. From dance we are reborn, and to dance we return. The allure escapes no one. An ungrateful gaze for days, years, half a millennium, if you let it.
Uh, this next one is called Checklist for the New World. One, it is true when buried, no one will care for the color of your passport. Then again, the color of your passport will determine the hand that buries you, the gentleness with which it lowers your stillness to the ground. And rest assured, you will be buried, if not by a loved one, then by the earth, which everywhere begets the dirt's bidding. Two, just as God gives, so does he take a quiet cup of tea in a garden for a week of shrapnel, wide smiles for scarred arms, how blessed you are to have a disorder in the land of pills. You come from a lineage of men who've made dew with music, hoarse croaks by candlelight. Somewhere foggy, a cousin died mysteriously. You weren't at the funeral, only God knows what happened. Three, don't let the Americans know that we too have sinned. They will use it against you. Four, if we must be frank, the grass is always burning on the other side. Pick, where will you last longer? Semaphore. After all is said and done, find me a free speech patriot who'd let the flag burn. Like a rice field in a land so far away, a mother must wake in the dead of night to call her children. Say, this is the last fire you will ever know. Tomorrow the ocean will dry and you will walk across, pick as many fish as your hands can carry. Every day I walk under the shadows of banners, fluttering tidal waves drowning the soil. The ground I walk will sink before I hear the surrender of the cord, the fabric falling to the earth where it belongs. But burial has never been sufficient grounds for justice. If every flag that ever was burned, where does that leave Kurdistan, Lumumba, Mandela, Nicaragua? Own it. Not every flag was sewn equal. The Palestinian flag is still a target in Palestine. When the Queen of Hawaii was forced to surrender her throne to invaders, how long did it take to raise the American flag? Asked years later, her niece said, it was bad enough to lose the throne, but infinitely worse to have the flag go down. In Cairo, every instance of unrest brings a flood of red and black and white, a torrent of golden eagles vacating the streets. After all is said and done, who am I to deny a calloused hand, the cloth that gives it voice? I am not Xerxes before the river, intoxicated with possibility. I am drunk on New Year's, my friend in my arms, telling me how happy she is. I am home, knowing the seal always has a cost, even if we don't pay it. From the sky. You can't even see where a border might be drawn. The ocean is a pond, comprehensible, might as well be a home for ducks. Bombs, if ever, if even heard, are a pop. Fireworks might just be a eat. Gaza is sleeping soundly. From the sky, I become insect, faceless, and prefer it that way. What is a country to a vacuum? What is a flag on the moon? From the sky, I become child again, asking my father about space stations. This one is Russian. This one is American. They are all toys. They're all plastic floating. And then this last poem is also untitled. <clears throat> At the rope's end of my desire was a violent urge to witness a horizon of pyramids, graveyard of kings, armed monks marching upon the citadel, the bodies of dragons raining down from the sky, the swords of knights melting into the earth, a king bowing down to a peasant only to be slapped senseless, the taste taken out of his mouth, the transfiguration of concrete into roses. In the beginning of my grief, there was a compulsive desire to become the patron saint of the nightcap, the flat tire, the endless highway, a single member of a procession that could choke an avenue, a house of unbridled spirits, offering a kingdom of poison ivy, a wreath of rosebud becoming obsolete. The object of my obsession was swiftly cut by the sweet smell of an unfolding morning. The Texas road wide ahead, a path of broken glass straight back to Los Angeles, where the ocean became the catalyst of my dreams. The ever open hand reaching out to water, refusing to stay still. All shorelines are but miles away from islands of garbage. What a criminal we have made of the sea, that thief of the trembling body, enemy of flight. My struggle distilled becomes little more than the wish to watch a sunset and know the day to be one of many. To not concern myself with the flight patterns of pterodactyls, I long instead to conjure the memory of the God King of God Kings, unmake its very utterance. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hazem. We're going to finish out tonight with um, Simone's penultimate poem.
These technical difficulties, I am just, ugh. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, well, if, I'm just gonna read one more poem that I just wanna read the final poem, which is actually a different one. Um, it's called Blood Meal. Uh, I don't know if y'all know who Kenneth Goldsmith is. If you don't, you should consider yourself pretty lucky. Uh, he's a conceptual poet, and I have a personal love against him, so I wrote a poem about it. Uh, so it's, it's titled Blood Meal, uh, after Kenneth Goldsmith's 2015 reading of Michael Brown's autopsy report as conceptual poetry. Um, all right. There's a white man who says he understands the destructions of our bodies. Monotone's reports compiled from the trials of our ghosts calls it experimental, transcendental, unflinching opening into the seeds of poplar trees. An effort in undoing. Good thick rope that doesn't know how to loop around the army of a neck. He excises his name's gloam, makes myth, clinks champagne, in rain of white voices heavy on our heads. Oh, the joyous safety of never seeing your blood marbling the streets, of cramped family reunions inside obituary. What sweet, sharp relief it must be to leave home in the morning and know you'll always come back. Thank you again for hanging and sticking with all my weird technical difficulties. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized everyone was muted. Thank you so much. Um, Simone, so, so this is embarrassing and it's live. Um, was that your last poem? Um, because I um, <laughs> used the word penultimate probably wrong. So. Oh, no. I mean, I don't <laughs> want to take up all y'all's time. I'm good. I'm just, you know, I'm too Midwestern to make a decision. <laughs> Okay, well, we can leave it there. Um, thank you, Shanta. <laughs> thank you, Simone. Thank you, Hazem. It was such a pleasure to host you guys. I'm hearing my own echo. Um, and thank you, everyone who tuned in um, from YouTube. And um, I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you so much. It was an honor to read with you all. I enjoyed the, these poems were delicious. Thank you both. Well said. <laughs>